I got a big small mouth right there. Look at that thing. You know, chasing it with a crankbait and a jerkbait and a drop shot with pan optics and let's see what happens out there. Day two Tackle Warehouse vlogs out on Lake St. Clair. We ran over to Canada yesterday and caught them cranking and throwing a drop shot. Never found that massive school of smallmouth that uh, is notorious for out here. So we're gonna run back out again today. I'm gonna try you know, a few things different. I might throw a tube or a Ned rig a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna throw a jerk bait, you know, deep diving like a craft jerk bait and, and see if I can get a school fired up, expand on kind of what we learned the other day. You know, poke around, just do something different today. Better weather for sure, we're gonna have less wind, which is good. We got blown off the water, some nasty rain and hail and lightning. So a little bit more of a stable day out there today and let's see if we can go find a good school of them. There's one. Lost them. I'll let him go. I like to lose them on the crankbait, so I'm gonna try the old jerk bait and see what happens. DD100 gets down about 10, 12 feet. See if maybe the jerk bait will get the actually get the fish in the boat. Can't cover quite as much water, but I think that my odds will go up with a jerk bait for at least landing them. There we go. Got me a little nibble here, fellas. Been trying to cover water and find a group of fish and Got one on the old crankbait. I want to barely hook. You know, they just don't want to get the crankbait. You can cover a lot of water with it, but now that I've got a bite, I'm hoping there's more there. I'm going to throw the, the jerkbait out there. He's about ready to come off. Oh, I got him. Watch this. Woo, just barely pull it and get it off. It's a nice one. 2.0 XD. Now that I've caught one, I'm going to throw it, slow down, throw that jerk bait a little bit and see if I can get more to react because I think there's more down there. Good healthy one. Let's throw that crank or the jerk bait real quick, see what happens. Man, it's, there's so much water to cover out here. And we're sitting in 16 feet of water right now. I started off cranking again a little bit. My, my goal was to kind of find, cover a ton of water with a crankbait just because I'm more efficient with it. I can cover way more ground with the crankbait than I can the jerkbait. But when I get out and crank in, in open water like this for, for smallmouth, uh, one of my favorite crankbaits uh, now is this new 2.0 XD by Lucky Craft. And the reason why I like it is it's a little bit smaller crankbait. I think smallmouth like to chase down a bait that's a little bit smaller. I think your odds of landing them are, are a little bit better as well when you have that little smaller uh, crankbait. But when you get out in open water like this, you want to cover a lot of ground. So when you want to cover a lot of ground, you want a longer rod for making longer casts and keeping that bait in the strike zone longer. With a graphite rod, I believe that you pull it away from the fish too quick. When they bite it, I think you jerk it out of their mouth. So the glass helps dampen that that initial strike and then when they're jumping and, and everything that you know absorption of that rod that real parabolic bend on that glass rod helps to not pull those trebles out of the fish's mouth and then uh, tatula elite reel so this reel right here is designed as a distance casting reel uh, it's it's not designed for going and casting little baits and skipping docks it's designed for making a long bomb and get maximum distance out of a bait so uh, that combination is great for covering ground and, and just speed reeling and trying to catch or find those groups of smallmouth that are kind of out and just 
the middle of nowhere. You have to cover a lot of ground to find those fish. They're so finicky on the crankbait. They, I think they like to bite it, but they, they're so hard to land. I had two bites this morning on it, lost the first one, caught the second one, and he was barely hooked. And when I caught that second one, I had this Pointer 100 DD tied on. And the reason for that is that it's, it's a great bait to clean house on them. And if I know that they're there, I'm gonna land way more fish on the DD 100 than I will the crankbait. I think it pulls the fish from a lot farther away. And instead of covering miles and miles of shoreline or areas out there, I can cover that with the crankbait and then get a bite and start throwing the jerkbait in that area and hopefully pick you know quite a few of them up and exactly that happened right now as i caught one on the, the crankbait and threw the jerkbait out there and immediately caught one on the jerkbait and the neat thing about that the pointer 100 dd is it has a long bill and i can get that bait down to you know about 13 feet so we're sitting in 15 right here you know 15 16 those smallmouth like to look up and I definitely want the bait to get down farther. You know, a normal jerk bait that runs five to eight, I just don't think it's quite deep enough. If they're really chasing, it would work, but that DD100 is such a good deep diving jerk bait. I mean, the DD stands for deep diver and it gets deeper than any jerk bait I have ever thrown. Uh, the next best one is the Stacy 90. But that Pointer 100, that just, for some reason, smallmouth love the original Pointer 100. And we're out in deep water, so why not throw the DD and try and get a few more bites? Fishing out here really is kind of feast or famine. You know, you don't really catch much. You bounce around, stop a lot of times, don't catch much, or you just catch one here, one there. And the whole trick is trying to find a couple acre area you know a hundred yard stretch you know 100 by 100 yard stretch where there's a lot of fish swimming around so really you just run and look at look at your graph and try and see where the grass is better maybe a little bit patchier grass maybe a little taller grass or there is where the grass start starts and stops you know if you can get some good clean sand patches you know when i'm throwing a, a jerk bait i like a real light action rod I used to throw a medium heavy, or sorry, a medium action rod, but I've gone to this medium light action rod and I've landed way more fish because of it. When I originally started throwing this rod, I thought that it was too light. I actually didn't like it, but I've started to really like it. It's a 6.9 and I think that a little bit shorter of a rod is easier when you're snapping a, a you know, jerk bait around a six nine. I, I wouldn't go over a seven foot rod. You know, seven to just below is going to be the the you know the best rod for throwing a jerk bait. You know, you have a lot of movement on that thing when you're twitching that thing around. You get over over a seven foot rod, it's going to kind of wear you out. It's going to wear out your forearm and your wrist is going to start hurting uh, if you're twitching it all day. So, Tatuli Elite reel which is a distance casting reel it's designed to cast a long way so with that tattoo elite reel i'm able to get it down deeper and I, i've been watching on pan optics and it's getting down to 13 feet which is pretty deep you know right here i'm fishing in an area that it's it's 18 feet deep the deeper i can get it the better better it is and the better my odds are of catching a fish so having that Tattoo Elite Reel allows me to get that bait out farther, keep it in the strike zone longer, and get it deeper. And then uh, 10 pound Sunline Fluorocarbon, that helps get down to you. Fluorocarbon helps get your bait down a little farther. It's also you're nearly impossible to the fish, or impossible to see. Uh, you know, almost invisible to the fish. So that's why I use fluorocarbon, but it's a 10 pound Sunline FC Sniper. That helps get the bait down there. If they're line shy, then they don't really, they don't see the, the line. They've just seen that bait twitch around and just keep covering water until you find a group of them. And if you don't, move on. You know, one of the other things I do with this jerk bait, you know, all jerk baits and crank baits, I like to change out the hooks to a gami. 
On my crankbaits, I really like going with the, the G Finesse medium heavies. But with the jerk baits, I've always run just a Gami round bend. And I believe these are size three on a Pointer 100. You know, it's a pretty big treble on there, but I like a round bend on, on the jerk bait. For some reason, I just feel like I've landed more. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a deep jerk bait, if it's a, a three hook jerk bait. I just, I like that round bend be, you know, better. The jerk bait, this lighter rod, you know, the 10 pound line, and that round bend on a jerk bait, I just feel like I've landed way more fish with that combination. Hey. Hi, bud, what you doing? You have a good morning, have a good day at school, okay? All right, love you, bud. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> the old jerk bait. So I kind of wanted to get in the area where I felt like there were some fish with the crankbait. That got me in the area and then now I threw the Pointer 100 DD out there which gets down on a good long cast. I can get to about 13 feet deep with that jerk bait. So I hadn't made but three or four casts and got one in this area where I found them with the, the crankbait. So now I think I can slow down Throw that DD 100 a little bit. See if I can catch a couple good ones or get around a group of them and, and catch a whole bunch of them. So DD 100, fishing it really fast. The DD 100 is, a, is basically a take off of the Pointer 100, but just a longer build to get down deeper. Oh, I see a couple of them down there. See if they like the old Zayco on a drop shot. Got it. <laughs> Saw that one on Panoptics. Oh, he's not a big one. Look at that on a Zayco on a drop shot. Had to try it, you know? I know they like big baits sometimes, so I threaded on a, a Zayco. Zacco, Yamamoto. Just to see, I like that two-tone. It's kind of a shiner perchy kind of color. Put that on with a big hook on there. It's the second bite I had on it. I actually saw a couple of them on Pan Optics right there. I've really been wanting to try this just to see if I could get a bigger bite on it. For some reason out on, on St. Clair, those smallmouth like a big bait on a drop shot sometimes. It's crazy because you can catch them on a little three inch worm or on a big five inch, you know, like a almost like a soft jerk bait. Uh, at least it seems like they'll bite it. I want to keep it on and just see if I can get a bigger bite. Keep throwing the crankbait and the jerkbait, see if I can find a group of them. Once I get around that group, then I'll really throw this and see if I can pick up some of those bigger fish that are down there. I gotcha. I gotcha. I saw that one on 2D. Dropped it right to him and got him. That one, I actually was cleaning up the deck, getting my rods kind of situated there, and I looked down on 2D, and that one was sitting there. It's amazing what you can do. You know, I think what happens when it's slick calm like this, those fish hear the hydro wave, and then they get to the boat, and they see the shade of the boat, and they're curious. I could see him as really high off the bottom, so I think he came up to look at the hydro wave, and straight down, they get it instantly on that drop shot. You know, that shad shaped worm and uh, you know when it's calm like this you kind of have to mill around cover water as best you can but constantly look at that 2D uh, and pan optics and see if you can see him swimming out there. See that's one right there. It's 40 feet out. There's two of them there. One's hiding in the grass. Look that, that other one just came over there. 
see if they, they might have been reacting to my drop shot there because I popped it up and all of a sudden they moved. So, see right there. He's getting pretty close now. Heck yeah. They're all over the place right here. Behind us, underneath us, he's got it. Boy, there, oh, there's so many down there. Wow. Ton of them down there, you guys. I'm gonna swing them and then try and get back out there quick. There's a bunch down there. We just ran to a new area and the grass looked right. And I mean, the second I dropped the troll motor, they're swimming around. I'm just gonna let this one go and grab a another D shad and get out there right away. This is going to be a good spot to move around and try and pick them off on pan optics. I mean, I saw them behind the boat, around the boat, under the boat, and this, so G finesse, uh, size uh, two, I basically just pin it. This is a Yamamoto shad shape. Just pin it just maybe an eighth of an inch back from the nose. So his nose looked like that, quarter ounce. Arc tungsten weight. Oh, this one's gonna get it. Oh my goodness, you guys ready? Straight dropped right on his dome. Good one, see you. Straight pan optics to him. It's the best one yet, it's a three and a half pounder. Almost jumped in the boat. We found a group of them for sure. You guys, are, there are a lot of fish around. It's a four pounder. Almost. There we go. Maybe not a four, high three. Close to four. Shad shape worm. Pan optics. And I watched the bait hit the water and I watched the fish rise up to meet it. And then it passed him and he followed it down and my line stopped sinking. You know, it's a good three and three quarter pounder right there, three and a half at least. You know, real healthy. Got on a little group of them. There's one under the boat right now. You know, typically when I drop shot like this and chase them with pan optics or, or just drop on them, I'm impartial to a medium action rod. I like a seven foot medium action. That's just a good all around. It's not too light, it's not too heavy. Uh, I designed one for Daiwa, the Tattoo Elite Series that it's a, we call it a drop shot rod, but it does everything. And it's a medium action, seven one. And you know, really what I try to do is look for them out here. You know, if I see them on pan optics, I'm pitching to them. If I see one on 2D, I drop it to them. And what I do when I, when I actually see it is, you know, get it out there to it, make sure it gets to the bottom, you know, on a slack line. You know, you want that thing to drop as fast as possible. Once it gets on the bottom, I just like to sit there and shake it. Just like that, just keeping the weight on the bottom. You know, if I drop the rod tip, it doesn't sink. So I just sit there and shake it and shake it, shake it. And one of two things are gonna happen. While you're shaking it, your line's gonna go slack, meaning that he, he grabbed it and came up towards you. Or your rod's just gonna pull down. But uh, lots, lots of movement. You know, I want that worm shaking as much as possible, but I want the weight on the bottom. That's the biggest key for actually getting these fish to bite is weight on the bottom, lots of movement with the worm. And then, uh, you know, seeing them, you know, out here in this open water, it's, you got to get in front of them. They move around so much. It's nothing for that fish to swim 50 yards to one side. So when it's calm like this, I like to just roam around in an area. It was, we've had a couple bites here. And so all I've been doing now is just kind of crisscrossing around looking for a fish or two. And it seems like every, you know, a couple minutes, I get a little ways away and all of a sudden I see a little group of them and I start casting to them and I catch one and there's a couple around the boat and then I lose them again. So I just have to start moving around, you know, looking, you know, looking with panoptics until I see one.
fish. Come on. What do we have here? I think it's a real nice one, actually. Oh yeah, that's a big one right there. Oh boy. Oh my goodness, that's like a five pounder. Whoa, look at that one. That's a big one. <laughs> look at that. Don't you come off now. Look how fat he is. Yeah, that's a good one there. That's what we're looking for. That's a solid, you know, four and a half, four and three quarter. Big one, man. So fat, so heavy. That's a nice one. Finally got a good one. Oh, there's another one on the graph right there too. Not bad. I'm basically just gridding this little area out, going back and forth and moving around with panoptics. It's, it's really calm right now, and I can really see the fish on panoptics. Look at that one. That's a good one right there. I've got two good ones so far, several other just fun ones, but there's definitely some down there. Just keep moving around you know, with that panoptics and, and looking at them and pitching that drop shot to them. You can catch a lot of fish that way. You know, it's been pretty fun out here. I was finally able to kind of figure out uh, or find what I was looking for. And that's an area, a group where there's a lot of fish and just a couple acre patch. And the way this weather is, I can, you know, with it being kind of calm, I'm able to just move around on the trolling motor and search for them with panoptics. You know, I'm hunting for them. And there's enough in this one little area that I could just, you go this way, you catch one, you come back over here, catch one, come right back through, catch another one and you know, just move back and forth. And, and really the, the ticket was a drop shot. Uh, it's, it's one of the most popular ways to catch them out here on St. Clair or any of the Great Lakes is, is just a you know, standard, drop, you know, standard issue drop shot. For me, it's a shad shaped worm by Yamamoto. Um, you know, it seems like those smallmouth really like it. I think it looks like a little perch, a little goby. You know, this color or a green pumpkin both work very well. Uh, size uh, two split uh, drop shot hook, the G finesse, and then a quarter ounce arc tungsten weight. And you know that allows me to, if it's a little bit windy, I can kind of drag it through the areas. Uh, if it's calm like this, it's just so easy to just look with that Garmin, that panoptics and see them. You save so much more time than casting to where there isn't a fish. You might as well look to see where that fish is and cast to it. And it's happened right here. There's a lot of fish in this area. We finally found it. It's been a lot of fun. Hope you guys have liked it. It's been a, a fun vlog to shoot out here on St. Clair. So it's, it's a beautiful day. Uh, if you guys like, you know, what happened here today, give us a like, shoot some comments. We'll, we'll respond and, uh, you know, hopefully we can answer a few questions for you and hopefully this helped you out and catch more fishing, you know, where your neck of the woods.